Oh, hello. Queen Elizabeth here. And it's been decreed on my jubilee that you should subscribe to this podcast, hit the notification, all the other shenanigans, maybe give it a nice comment and all the other bits, and I'll see you in another 75 years. Okay. Ta-ra! Wired Unplugged Hello everybody and welcome to Wired Unplugged episode 16. This is a message from past Jake and Aaron. Um, You might notice that we're wearing the same clothes (laughs) as we were last week. And it's because we're actually outside enjoying a barbecue or... um, What else do people do with Jubilees, Aaron? We're we're having uh, jubilations for the Jubilee. We are having a barbecue. Yeah, but that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what, yeah, like eating from, a flag, eating from a Union Jack paper plate. Like they're selling yeah. a lot of them. Anyway, yeah. the point is we're not actually here. So who knows what's gone in the news? There could be something. Hopefully it's, it's good. Hopefully no one else is like scared of Game Pass or whatever. But, but or like <laughs> some, a country has bought a company or whatever. So hopefully we've got some good news in, in a run up for E3. But we just wanted to record this, this uh, intro to say that the interview... Well, Aaron, I mean, can you give the people at home a little taste of what's going to be happening over the next hour? Yeah, so um, since since we're away uh, yeah. celebrating Her Madge, uh, tip, tip the bowler hat to you, yeah. Her Madge, um, we, um, we had uh, the opportunity to talk to... Um, we had the opportunity to talk to Mikey Goodman uh-huh. of Falconeer fame, Disco uh-huh. Elysium fame, vocalist for The Sixth. Yeah, and also the vocalist of this podcast. Yeah. And also the vocalist for the jingles in this podcast it, as well. It, but it, we were also bizarrely joined on the road, live from his uh, tour across the US, um, uh, <laughs> Mr. Simmons, Kyle Simmons from Bastille. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're, 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 they're a fairly unknown band. They're going places, okay? Uh, for those yeah. who don't know. Yeah, they're just uh, currently on a sold out tour across the whole of the United States. Yeah. Um, and that's why my chemical romance are currently touring the UK because, you know, they're like Bastille's over in the US. Yeah, they got it. We'll go They've to got the it UK. covered. They're scared. Yeah. We, we do. It's like an exchange program for music. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, it, I, <laughs> I had so much fun with this chat um, just simply because, you know, <laughs> Mikey and Kyle come from very different musical backgrounds, but what un- unites them is uh, uh, voice acting and, and yeah. voice artistry. So that's something that Kyle has recently been get- getting into himself. Um, and we talk a bit about that. We get some tips on, you know, yeah. if you are... Uh, a vocalist in a band what's what's the differences between uh keeping your throat safe versus doing vo and all of this stuff we we turn to a tour bus podcast uh we talk about games as well obviously we talk about a lot of games um and then just expanding your horizons to ensure that the future of any industry be it video games or music um it's down to the people that within it to grow and expand it wow. it's a very interesting deep chat again we we geek out about tour buses quite a bit but um it's 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 a good i i had a lot of fun and i hope everyone enjoys it well there we go gang it's time for the uh the, the almost feature length spash enjoy and uh we'll come back for a little outro wired unplugged Hey everyone, so we're at the interview section of the show, and some of you might be asking, where the heck is Jake? But Jake isn't here this week, he's predisposed, um, so I'm going to step up, I'm stepping up. But I get to take on this awesome moment of having two special guests this week, not just the one, we've got two, we've got two for the price of one, which is amazing. So we are joined by Mikey Goodman and Kyle Simmons. How are you both? Great, doing good. How are you? Uh, do you know what? No one ever asks me that, so that's caught me off guard. I am okay. I am melting in the heat, um, but I'm all the better for seeing both of your faces. So, oh, you know, what, what more What more could I ask for? Mike, are you keeping good? I'm feeling all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not as hot as you are. It seems to be affecting you a lot. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Mercy. I don't know. <laughs> so um, a lot of you might already be familiar with Mikey. He's done um, a lot of stuff with Wired in the past from VO um, and spoken word pieces on uh, the Falconeer. Um, he's absolutely smashed it in Disco Elysium. And uh, he's also 
absolutely killed vocals for sixth. Um, so we'll get to all of that in a moment. But as I said, two for the price of one. We are also joined by the musical maestro that is Kyle Simmons from Bastille, who is currently on tour, right? I am. I'm on tour. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm in Portland, Oregon, as we speak. And how, how far? How far through you at the moment? I'm almost two weeks, um, and I've got another uh, four weeks after that. Four weeks. Yeah. Four weeks. And how, 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 how do you uh, how do you gather the energy to keep that going? Because let's be honest, like this is going to date when this is recorded, but it's just been. Um, Basically, everyone is just in Milton Keynes to go and watch My Chemical Romance in the UK because you're not here. That's, um, right. That's about right, yeah. Ex- exactly, yeah. So it's the next best thing, uh, My Chemical Romance. Um, but I did watch a bit bit of one of their shows. We've all been to good gigs. Um, and, you know, when you, you're watching and you're singing along, you come back and then you, like, shat for two days. But you all have to do this... Almost every day. Almost every day. <laughs> so, like, what's 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 the uh, what's the routine, the ritual to keep that uh, energy going? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I think um, just we've done it for so long that I kind of the norm is to be a little bit tired all the time. Um, so <laughs> I know the feeling. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We try and keep it try, like quite chilled out in the day because obviously, basically, the main bulk of our job comes starts at nine nine pm. Yeah. Um, and runs to about quarter to 11 and there's a little bit of downtime and then we try and get to sleep on the bus which is can be difficult for some people because you're yeah. in like, like you're in like a tiny little bunk bed, a little curtain <laughs> exactly yeah um and then um you just hope the roads are flat between this gig and the next and then you drive overnight um yeah i it's, it's i don't know I, I i can't really describe it you just it's just it, it's just it just comes with the job and you just kind of put up with it really yeah, Mike, you you're no stranger to touring. Um, how, how how do you keep yourself going? Is it shredded wheat or <laughs> what's the magic? I would have mixed, actually. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, that was what I was doing when I was in America. I was yeah, it was it was quite DIY. I was just having my oats, my like exact same meals every day for like the beginning and at the end, and having something. Yeah, I don't know. Like Kyle says, like it's very hard to sleep on some tour buses and things like that. When I was touring Europe, I took the suicide bunk, which is the very, the bunk right next to the driver because you've got more space. Now, Kyle's... <laughs> yeah. Kyle's been there. <laughs> no, yeah. Because basically on, on, on a tour bus, on a tour bus, you, you sleep with your feet towards the front of the bus. Ooh. And with, the, that, with that suicide bunk, you sleep sideways. Mm. And um, it's basically like, I don't know, if, if the bus has to slow down or come to an abrupt stop, uh, your your feet your feet get broken instead of your head i guess is the is is the awful way to say that um and the suicide bunk because you're sideways it's it's just the entire body but i don't know so luckily uh, it never happened i have to ask if if any of you ever fallen out because you know you have to imagine yeah Yeah, not not with each other you could friends it's cool (laughs) (laughs) there was this one time (laughs) he wrongs me uh, no. I've never fallen out of a bunk. No, no, um, I've never heard of anyone falling out either. Actually, no, which is lucky. Um, uh, American bunks are triple stacked, so ah. the height. So like, yeah. So it, that, it's a it's a long old drop from the top one. Europeans are double <laughs> stacked, so it doesn't. It, like, it wouldn't hurt as much. But I, uh, yeah, I think me and Mikey are, are clearly pretty good at sleeping in tiny little narrow boxes. <laughs> it's a skill. It's a skill. It's a talent. You get used to that, and then you really, really appreciate your own bed when you come home. Like. You're really yeah yeah but yeah. that's got to be the the best moment it's that post holiday that first sleep post holiday oh. and uh only having a tiny little place for your belongings is it's weird but yeah kyle probably has a bigger place for his belongings so he's doing bigger tours, <laughs> <laughs> tours. <laughs> i mean all buses are uh, 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 bus wise all buses are kind of the same uh, just uh, yeah. kind of the same that tiny little dimensions um but yeah as you know you get you get used to it if you've just tuned in you are listening to apparently a podcast about tour buses um so uh (laughs) moving on let's get into the good stuff so kyle i think um a lot of people are going to be asking how the hell we've uh we've managed to wrangle you into being on this and taking time out from the tour 
and we have to give massive props to Micah there. What a legend. Um, but I'm, I'm right in thinking that you're um, you're a bit of a gamer, right? You're a bit yeah. of a gamer. You're into your games. Yeah, What's, totally. uh, what, what, what feeds your gaming glove? So, well, so on tour, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I take my Switch just because it's tourable. Yes, yes uh, it's, Switch massive. It, it's this big. Um, have, you, have, uh, you, have you got the OLED? Did you upgrade to the Switch OLED yet? I didn't. I didn't. Sexy screen. I, yeah, I know. I, I kind of, uh, I've got a few friends and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of due to speak to to find out whether or not it's worth, it's worth getting one. Um, yes, but, the answer but my is yes. One, okay, the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but I've got a PS5 at home. Um, I used to tour with these things. Uh, I, was, I think it's called a Vanguard. It's like a carry case that you keep your ex- Xbox yeah. PlayStation inside. Then you, the lid has a screen in yeah, it. Yeah, the screen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it's pretty pretty transportable. But it, after a while, it's just there's a lot of stuff. After six weeks of one being on the road, carrying around so much stuff, yeah. it's like the, the switch just plops right in your bag. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, P- PS5 at home, which unfortunately I couldn't bring out with me. Which um, it's, 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 it's a beast. It's a beast. I know. But it's, it's, got it's probably butt. good for my career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I'm not sat on my PS5 all day, top yeah, of yeah. Bottom, So yeah, you, you you miss your stage call, man. Where were you? Sorry, I was just yeah, getting exactly. there. I was just uh, I was just doing some Fortnite or something. But um, <laughs> go on, uh, Mikey. What uh, what console is in the bus? Oh, do you have a bus console? So, we're back to the tour bus podcast. Yeah, then, so, tour yeah. Bus. so um, uh, European buses. Do you know what actually? So uh, Woody, our drummer, he brought his Xbox out in a in a Van Gogh case. So that's in the back lounge. Strong. Our bus might not have a console. I don't even think we've checked because Woody just had his Xbox there. So we're at the back, just like Halo and FIFA and whatnot. Oh. Um, yeah, but normally buses will have a kind of PS4 or something like that. Mm. Um, what are you uh, What are you rocking on your Switch on tour? So before I left, I bought the entire Bioshock catalog. <laughs> nice um like just i just really get into it i really get into yeah, it in the yeah, back. Yeah. and then people knock on the door like carl we heard you screaming are you you're right back there yeah just uh, <laughs> there was a shadow <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so i'm kind of working my way through that uh when i get a little pockets of time um yeah that's kind of what's been on my menu although i still haven't finished witcher which i like it, it looks so good on the switch as well it's i'm, I'm so surprised it's 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 so amazing. All the DLC. But, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, did you have the the you had the actor of The Witcher on this podcast, didn't you? The cockle. Yeah, yeah, Geralt, Geralt of wow. himself. Yeah, um, and <clears throat> we're actually going to talk a bit about him in a bit, actually. So uh, hold nice. on to your butts. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but you know, so obviously you've got gaming in your heart, um, but you're also leading into the game world in interesting ways and getting involved in in, in vo right in te- uh, voice acting thanks to my very good friend mikey well this uh, was, this was actually going to be the question as well i had another question was how did you two actually meet because you know <clears throat> from a well, musical perspective the reason is is because uh we're, we're both good friends with dot major from the- ah yeah and uh i was going to his gig with bruno and then kyle just turned up beside us and then as he does talking. yeah 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 and one thing led to another and and then kyle auditioned for disco elysium and he got it and he was very very good he was morel and then who, who else were you oh uh the video revishol video revishol that was a good yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, so I, many characters there's, there's like about 100 or characters i'm, I'm like <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, so that's the, cause that's the thing. You you both worked on Disco Elysium, right? I mean, what was that um, process like? Because I know, Mikey, for you, you've had a a, a big role in terms of, um, and we'll talk about this in a bit, in terms of helping direct and cast uh, the VO. Yeah. But you, you've also done VO in the game as well. And then uh, Carl. I got into the game. I got into the game because I was the first voice cast yeah, Abby Fryer, who is a viola player in uh, British Sea Power. Mm. Um, yeah, and they also did the uh, the soundtrack. So yeah, she uh, the guy said, um, "Oh, we're we're looking for someone who's got a really crazy voice. He does all these odd voices." And she said, "I know the person, you know, because I've done <laughs> a lot of music with her." And then and then she got me, and then and then they were really happy with how I produced it. 
And then yeah. I just got asked, oh, we're looking for this other voice. And I was like, I have that voice. I know that person, you know. And then I, we, we got that sorted. And that one thing led to another, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Mikey, I, I am going to say in terms of when this is a lovely performance, you, you have a knack of, the only way I can describe it is if, if someone was walking around, your voice it is like the ground talking to someone. You, you, you have the voice of the earth. Um, <laughs> Not this voice, my lower voice. For your lower one, yes, I can't do it, but um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a headset and I'll start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's all right. You're not here to perform. You're not here to perform. Oh, uh, but, but Carl, what, what was the experience like for you? Was it your first voice acting job um, yeah, in, in games? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. Uh, um, all thanks to all thanks to uh, to Mikey who kind of like um, we legend. got chatting and yeah, absolute legend. I got chatting. <laughs> and he was like, oh, like, um, and it was really. I remember being stood next to him and like we've been chatting for a bit because uh, Dot and uh, uh, Dot's brother Bruno had gone off and stuff. And Mikey at the blue was like, oh, do you? Um, do you do voices, by the way? I was like, whoa, what, what's happening? Weird, weird pickup line. Um, <laughs> I can uh, do Kermit the Frog. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> I'll do whatever you want, Mikey. Um, and so, um, and then... Um, oh, what a night. <laughs> uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then uh, sort of, uh, Mikey sent through a, a bunch of guys who he thought I'd kind of, I'd fit. And then, um, yeah, just went into the studio and just kind of... Uh, well, so I think originally I did some like um, auditions sort of back from just in, in, like in my flat in London. And they were like, oh, yeah, this one's really great. And then, yeah, I went into record kind of the actual thing. It was, it was, I mean, Mikey made it really easy. And I think because we knew each other beforehand, um, I mean, I mean, we already got along. It was really easy just sort of back and forth between me and him. And, you know, and Mikey could like, and like, uh, he's really good at direction, which is what I guess, you know, uh, why he got the job for, uh, for Disco Elysium. And he like, he know, kind of just knows how to get how to get what he wants out of someone, but without being an arsehole, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like, like just really, like really nice, direct, clear sort of direction. And um, so, yeah, just that, that, that first time um, was just, it was, it, was, yeah, it was really easy kind of, it, I, I find it quite easy. And it's, it's always, it's, it's fun just going into a booth and just doing weird voices. Have like, some fun like, with what? your friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing, and Kyle was very like as he's given me those compliments. I also, I give back that he's uh, he's also very good at voices, and 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 uh, he does all these crazy ones which I've asked him so far. But I've heard him do other ones which we really want to get in in another get other games. You know, these yeah. deep ones that Kyle actually does, which which would be amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, he was he was amazing. What was it? What was it? I had something in my head, and it's completely disappeared now, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you care you use yeah I, I think it would be interesting to know from both of you as well is how, how do you know uh how, how do you find the voice for the character as well because obviously with the the voice acting you're doing acting and you are getting into a character but then how do you you know what what's the process of, of finding the voice well first uh with this guy you have a big casting sheet and then then you uh it would describe the voice some other games would just give you, oh, we want this kind of thing. And then you just have to kind of work it and work it. I like it when someone works with me on something and goes, oh, no, we want it a bit like this or a bit like that. Because that's what I do with with my people, like with, with people like Kyle and other voice actors uh, on cartoon and stuff. I would be WhatsApping them, you know, I'd be like, um, oh, yeah, try a bit like this, try a bit like that or something like that. They'll give me a demo and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know. Or they might just get it straight away, you know. But that's how yeah. I personally develop as a as a casting and and as my own voice. I like to do that as well. Just as much information as possible. As the contact context is everything, you know. So what what sort of Carl thing? Man? Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, I I totally agree. I kind of um um I'll sort of like I'll, I'll I'll have the character sheet up and all the kind of like descriptions and stuff, and I'll, I'll just be basically wandering around my my flat, just kind of. Just get, uh, you know, just, like, just, he's at just it again. He's right, at it again. <laughs> like, just trying to get the right side. But, but you also remember, because, um, you know, if you go into like a four or five hour vocal session, if you've, if you've, like, if you've mangled your throat into a weird position, you've got to maintain that for, for yeah. the, like, the, the sort of four or five hours and stuff, which, which, um, which I found um, on the on, on the latest one that I, I voiced for, um, for Mikey, which was. Tiny Troopers. Tiny yes. Troopers, yeah. It was, it, it it, it, it was like a 
basically we ended up doing like a high register thing which is odd because my voice is, is very low naturally and yeah. so like i think i like more comfortably would sit around there but um and then oh yeah I, I, halfway through we had to have a little break and a bit of like just a little bit of a sit down and a chat because my voice was just wrecked <laughs> it, it, it being forced up there so but yeah i, I just kind of uh, I just walk around my flat and just keep doing different voices and sometimes I'll you know if, if it's a kind of like a some sort of army general you know I'll like put like put someone under your arm and kind of actually <laughs> try to become the person and then the voice yeah. kind of comes sort of from there which yeah. I find helpful so so, so so the gestures the gestures and the uh the props help the gestures, <laughs> yeah totally totally um, um, the, gest the gestures worry my microphones when people are always doing gestures when when they're when they're doing voiceovers you know let's smack i'm like no don't, <laughs> don't hit the mic you know but it, it's how it is it, people get carried away you know it's how it how it is I, I always thought um i'd have a career in voice acting one day but uh it, it got me in trouble once um, and I, I do want to know if voice acting has ever got either of you in trouble because um, there was this one time a long time ago, cast your mind back, um, I was in college and you stay around some friend's house, you have some drinks, you have some really overcooked food um, that is burnt because you forgot about it. Um, and then you sit around, you play some games and then people start saying, oh, can you do this? Can you do this? And everyone started doing voices. So they were doing like, you know, terminator and things like that and then it was like oh yeah let's let's do some weird stuff um i was like okay um and did either of you used to watch eastenders back in the day yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a character uh called nana moon um who was alfie uh, shane rich's mom in the show oh yeah uh, or nan um and uh so I, I did that voice for them. It was great. And then many years later, I had my uh, one of my first game industry jobs and I told this story and did the impression for a guy I worked with, thinking nothing of it. Then we get invited, me and him, to uh, an opening for a, a hotel at Thorpe Park. And it's this after hours event. It's like celebrities and then us for some reason. Um, <laughs> and we and we're just walking around and then Shane Ritchie walks by. Uh, and then my mate says, hey, Shane, Shane, my mate, my mate can do an absolutely wicked Nana Moon. And I was like, no, 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 don't do it. And it's like, oh, yeah, go on then. And then we did a little scene together and it was uh, it was great. But it got me in trouble, though, because uh, um, he was he was very sad that uh, she'd passed away at the same time. And oh, it no. seemed very insensitive. Um, so, you know, like Alton John with Candle in the Wind, I vowed never to do it again. Uh, <laughs> have, you, have you had any troublesome VO stories? I had one where um, where I actually, I turned it on into a character uh, when I was walking down Wat Watford High Street late at night, which is an easy, easy street to get in a fight in, if you would. Mm. <laughs> if, you know, I remember I was walking along the street and this gang uh, come up to me and said, "Can we borrow? Can you borrow me a lighter?" When they're all coming towards me, I'm thinking, "You, you, you want more than a lighter, you guys." <laughs> and then I was like, uh, <laughs> I just looked forward with my eyes really wide and big. I went, "No, I don't have a damn lighter." I <laughs> know. <laughs> 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 And it seemed to work. They were just looking at me like, "What the fuck?" What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I was about, I don't know, I must have been 20 or 30 metres away, and it went something like, this ain't Lord of the Rings, mate, but when I was far enough away. So yeah, up, the man. fear. It the worked. Fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, haven't, I don't do that often, you know. Yeah. Kyle, um, I, 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 do, do, you, do you have one? I'm quite green. I'm green in the green. industry, guys. I, I've, I've not got a... <laughs> I've not got enough under my belt for, for like a for an amazing Nana Moon story or a Lord of the Rings <laughs> story, uh, but hey, you know, there's hopefully there's time. Hope, hopefully in the future, and then I'll let you know. Um, we we'll do a second one, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, you know, you mentioned that you're you're quite green uh, to the acting space, but I'm not wrong in thinking that you folks are in Game of Thrones. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah well yeah like so uh basically just kind of um because of where they're based up in um i think it's belfast mm. uh um a lot like a, a lot of kind of bands go through but like move through that space and um and uh our like our kind of our group's got got in contact and they invited us down to 
uh, like uh, go and see all the behind the scenes and pick up all the massive swords and and stuff. Um, sit on the uh, throne. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All like, like all that stuff, and 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 then and then we'd invite them to the show and stuff. And then it got to the point where we were, they were like, do you, "Do you guys just want to fly in and just, and like just just like just get dressed up and be some extras in the episode?" And we're like, "Yeah." <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, uh, and so, yes. Yeah, so, so like we flew in, we we're up like four or five in the morning or getting our makeup done. We were like, we were kind of like fr- a fresh white walkers. So just newly oh. turned um, wildlings who had been turned. Uh, and uh, Dan, the least thing I had this massive like ax wound across his face and a few of us. Uh, yeah. So it was great. We got all dressed up, picked our weapons and stuff. Um, and that sounds then, cool. No. Yeah. It was, it, it was great. It was really fun. Um, I'll never forget. I, 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 it was like what f- half five in the morning. Um, I just, I'd gone for a piss. Um, I'd come out the little the little caravan on set on set, and a fully fully dressed up like Ice King. I can't remember what the name, the name is now. Ice King just came out. I was like, I was like, oh, you're right. Oh went, my god. All right, mate. I was like, oh my god. He's just he's he's just a normal guy under all that. <laughs> uh, and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in yeah we were in an episode. I think it was me and my tour manager for like a tenth of a millisecond yeah. made it in. Um, and yeah, it was, I was, it was really fun just to hang out with everyone all day. Um, yeah. Play with some swords. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a dream. Do you know what episode that is? Oh, we we'll have to put it in afterwards if you forgot. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you know, no, I, I, I'll be able to find out. I think I, it, it was like, it might've been the first episode of the last series or the last episode of the, Second we, last series. I'm not too sure. But we, yeah. We've got a good I'll researcher. You know. We've got a good researcher. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, Google, God. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But, oh, that is absolutely amazing. It is awesome. But it I mean, I fun. mean, speaking of so so Game of Thrones is done, but and, and this is for both of you. If you were gonna look to do um a movie or be in another TV show, what universe would you want to be a part of and what sort of character would you would you both want to play? Wow. And what is the meaning of life? <laughs> Good. Good. So I'll go first saying I've always wanted to to voice in Studio Ghibli. <gasps> yes. Uh, even though wow. that it's a Studio Ghibli movie, even though that it would have to be, you know, with some crazy kind of monster type of thing. Plenty of those. Upwards. But in real life, yeah, some kind of fantasy or a western or something like that a little bit like clean it's clint eastwood or something. Uh, dude you'd rock in a western actually yeah i'll try my best yeah <laughs> anyway we'll go. yeah um yeah uh, you know well uh, it's always gonna be sci-fi fantasy realm always um yeah some kind of like sci-fi sort of space like some sort of space uh kind of vibe i'm looking like star wars or somewhere a bit more out there more, like maybe more like fifth element kind of vibe oh nice yeah like, okay uh, blade runner yeah, yeah. just <laughs> yeah just something a bit nuts um that you can kind of... Of... sorry go on I oh no yeah i was gonna say just something just something something a bit just a bit crazy like that so kind of super futuristic sci-fi um yeah maybe yeah maybe that kind of that kind of vibe would be good i got a kind of a, a keanu reeves just vibe just then when you just started talking yeah you you'd do good at that kind of thing. Yeah, right. get you in another Matrix in yeah, space. Yeah, Matrix, Matrix Five. Matrix Five. Did, okay. uh, did did you watch the fourth one? I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Is it any good? Opinion is divided. Um, okay. It took me. <laughs> um, I was very jet lagged when I watched it, um, but it took me like three four days to come to an opinion because I wanted to let it wash over me. But I loved it. I loved oh. everything it was trying to say. Sorry, not everything it was trying to say. Everything it was saying, I think the biggest challenge is that if you don't know enough about what it is trying to say or, you know, the Wachowskis themselves and the journey yes. they've been on. I'd heard um, a lot about that. Yeah, and I, I think if you know all of that, there's so much in it. So I I, I laughed during it. It's, it's, it's a funny film, like intentionally funny. Um, I also, I've not told this to anyone, but th- there was some moments where I had, I had a lump in my throat. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I do, if you can watch it because, um, 
and just give it the time to wash over you because it's uh it's i think it's quite wonderful got you yeah okay have you seen it mikey i have not do you know what i've got to say this i've never seen any matrix film what, what? I've not even seen the first one i have to watch it yeah i'm sorry i have to watch it i had that reaction as well when i last said that wow <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I didn't even homework tonight. I, I taped it. I, I just forgot to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I. I it's um. It, it. It's one of those that still holds up. I just watched it. Uh, I watched it again the other day, um, and it's it's still, it's still brilliant. It's still brilliant. It's um, it's a piece of art. The the sequels, again, d- divided opinion, but um, again, I think. The, the really good thing that I like is when, when, and again, this isn't the Matrix podcast, but when, <laughs> when Matrix came out, it was saying a lot about the potential future of the humanity's relationship with technology, right? And there were a lot of things in there that hadn't really been, it was, it was very forward thinking stuff in terms of the, the trials and tribulations that could happen with technology in the future. Um, if you watch it now, since so much of that has actually come to pass, and I think people have experienced a lot of you know, the, the evolution of technology, the good side and the bad side, there's so much more that has added to the film if you go in equipped with that knowledge now because you've lived through it and you're like, oh, okay, this was ahead of its time and cool leather jackets. Yeah, so say. many cool leather jackets. So many cool leather jackets. But anyway, this isn't the Matrix podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is about games. Liz here again. Just a reminder that if you're watching this on YouTube, we're on Spotify, Apple, all the good places you find podcasts and some bad ones as well. So go over there, get the audio version. Make sure to subscribe, like, notify, comment, all the other things. Your queen commands you. So, um, Kyle, you mentioned yes. that you are working on uh, Tiny Troopers. What can you tell us about your character and, and, and yourself, Mikey, as well? You're obviously involved. Yeah, let Kyle work. Uh... Go so ahead. yeah, Tiny Troopers um, was it, yeah is the the latest uh, thing that sort of uh, Mikey's got me in on, um, and it, yeah, it was really fun. I um I I kind of I went in originally for there's like there's like a more kind of like with like kind of lieutenant kind of colonel general kind of guy yeah um, but um um. And then uh, there was another guy I auditioned for. And yeah, this guy, I, I'm, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say, because I guess I don't know. Say anything. But, you you but, say anything okay. and, and the editor will cut out what you can't right. say. So it's okay, fine. Great. You're fine. At ease. Yeah. yeah uh, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this character, Botch, who's kind of like a, kind of like uh, uptight, kind of like a sort of um, like lives for the army kind of, uh, kind of guy. Mm. Um, pretty full on. Uh, and yeah, me and Mikey just kind of, we just kind of worked, we kind of worked back and forth and workshopped it a bit and got it to a point. Um, obviously, as they're tiny, uh, the voices have to be quite high. Um, but uh, uh, but um, Mikey, uh, the wizard, he's, um, he's kind of like, he was able to like, like kind of affect all the voices to try and get them up to. Um, yeah. Well, Kyle's a wizard as well, you know, Kyle's a <laughs> producer as well, aren't you, Kyle? Like, that's yeah. what else you do as well. Um, yeah, also well, like you, you know, we, we kind of had a bit of a back and forth and worked out like kind of like because ha- uh, I think I was the first character Mikey recorded, so we were kind of working on how to how to get the voice like basically take a lot of the bass out of my voice to get it to that point. Um, even after I tried to squeeze it up higher, there was still a bit of a still a bit of EQ to be done, and then some like kind of pitch shift and stuff. It was yeah, it was really fun, and we I just spent the day sort of with Mikey, um, and then we just got all the words done, and then. Then we had to do the entire script again, but in gobbledygook. So, <laughs> okay, which yeah. which was which was just insane. Just <laughs> me and Mikey just pissing ourselves after yeah, every take. Your one was hilarious. Yeah. After every take I did, we like we we just kept pissing ourselves. It was yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot I, of fun. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you say gobbledygook. What does that even sound like? It's gibberish. Well, if you want, we'll play it right now. And then they'll, they'll play. <laughs> Great. Thank uh, you, Mikey, because I'm not sure I was prepared to. <laughs> I wasn't going to make you do it. Don't worry. Um, no, that's cool. I don't know if he, even if they're using the gibberish now. We just got asked to do the gibberish for the rest of the world. 
to have like a little bit like in some other games they have a, a language they make up so we kind of just made it up for each individual character yeah and, and then it was just gibberish so i i think that most people are only going to be able to play the english version right so i'm sorry about that carl but it was fun yeah it's no, a fun I mean, experiment it was a laugh. <laughs> it was, it was funny. yeah yeah but it was uh yeah anyway so uh, you know you you both aren't strangers to smashing vocals on stage carl you do some you, you do some back in cheers correct yeah yeah, yeah. I do. now has has coming from the music background helped in any way like are, are there any similarities and differences between doing a performance on stage versus in the booth i guess there's probably a difference in terms of as you mentioned earlier that you know if you are doing a four hour session in the booth it's very different to doing you know an, an hour an hour and a half set on stage um are there similarities and differences uh that you both think yeah well on stage i mean like you can be in a studio for four or five you know you could be in a studio for eight a month hours yeah yeah you know, when when you're recording, but I mean, I can only sing for four hours. You know, but singing is a lot more. You're putting a lot more into it when you're singing. When you're doing a voice, it, but you're using a lot of uh, muscles. It's about control uh, with your voice, about uh, how to use the muscles in your voice, how to project properly, and and yeah, it, it, there's a lot of similarities. And also performing, like I do spoken words on stage and things like that. Yeah. Like very, it's not like. It's not very macho to do poetry on stage at metal gigs, but you know, you do it in a certain way, it works. You know, if you do it really theatrically, it, it works, and all the crowds singing it back. So that's what I've done, and that's yeah. so for me, it's all really helped a lot. Yeah, I think uh, I've also heard that a lot of musicians can do different things like acting or voice acting and things like that. Kyle certainly can, and Doc can as well, who was on The Falconeer and. Yeah. Uh, Disco Elysium as well. So yeah, yeah. That there, there's. Uh, I think anyway. I'll I'll put on to Carl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I I totally agree. There's a lot of there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of uh, uh, links, you know, between the two. Uh, what with like kind of control and stuff. I think uh, you know with singing, it's kind of it's kind of my voice. It's kind of my voice. But when you do like when Mikey kind of touched on it a bit. When you do some when you try and do some some different voices you'll start to engage different parts of your throat and your yeah. mouth that you generally just don't ever use. And I think that's something that was interesting for me when, uh, when, when I went down to do a kind of a bit of a long session um, doing the, a botch character for Tiny Troopers with Mikey was that I was like, wow, I'm not used to, I'm not, I, I'm just not used to having to hold that tone for that long. Um, and, which is why I kind of had to have a bit of a break sort of in between. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of, sim lot, lot of similarities, but also kind of they have their differences in that, you know, I'm like, like very much actively using very different parts of my throat and, 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 and face that I kind of, that I haven't before. But it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to kind of find that. To be, <laughs> fair, though, to be fair, Kyle was doing something which is probably more strenuous than singing, which was that high pitched voice. I'm just yeah. talking when I said it's not as strenuous when when you're just doing a normal talking voice, you know, when you're just talking for hours on end, that's a complete different thing. He was he was like more or less shouting in this thing, which <laughs> would show <go> now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're, we're, we're almost at the end. We're almost at the end of time. Um, but I think what would be good is to pick both your minds uh, just to get some pointers for anyone out there that is interested in getting to the the voice acting space and, and Carl we heard from you on this one so I'm going to go to Mikey um what is your number one tip for helping someone get into character into character get into character yeah well, like I, my number one tip would be get as much context as you can and uh and my and well there's there's a few tips there's, there's a long row of tips but <laughs> it's, it's a process but yeah, you you don't want to be uh, um, uh, too self-aware. You you want to get out of that. You want to throw that away. You want to just throw yourself into the character. But yeah, learn as much as you can about the character. Like when I'm doing uh, um, Ancient Reptilian Brain, like the the voice, uh, oh no, when he talks like that, if yeah. I was closer to the speaker, it would come across better. It but was anyway, great. Yeah, thanks. It, um, 
but yeah, I was I was thinking in that voice. I was thinking when I was on. The, I was driving to the shops, and I had this voice in my head that I was. Yeah, the, the very interesting thing is, every time you do a voice, I can see that your face totally changes, and you, there, there's something that just happens within your face. Uh, yeah, this is something that I said uh, to someone. There's a lot of different things people do. With me, it's my eyes a lot. I suddenly become. Yep, yeah, that's another thing. Is if you're going to do a certain accent. You, all the muscles which different people use from around the world have used different parts of your your face, your muscles. So you have to adjust to that. And if you just try to just be yourself and just suddenly put on it, it doesn't work. It sounds like someone from that area trying to put on a voice from that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you have to completely throw yourself into it. Awesome. I, there's, there's another question, and this is one that we did ask Doug Cockle as well. Uh, and I think what I remember was if you're going into the recording booth, don't drink milk. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> saliva and stuff. You yeah, should drink, uh, you should drink uh, 24 hours before. You should you should keep yourself hydrated with water. Otherwise, you'll get lots of clicks in your voice. And if you get lots of clicks and stuff like that, then uh, a lot of studios will be like, oh, I can't be having them back, you know. It's, it's a lot of hassle. So someone has to be awesome if you're going to put up with the clicks. Yeah. It's a, you have to be RX7, sorry. So, so this, is, this is the question, really. So um, do, do you both have a few tips on commanding the vocals? Because we, we, we discussed not long ago about, you know, using different parts of your, uh, like Kyle, you're using different parts of your throat when you're doing VA, uh, voice acting and so on. Um, so are there any tips on... Um, commanding vocals but then also more importantly as well how best to take care of the old pipes what's a what's a what's a good way to keep those functioning well <laughs> yeah so I, I guess again as i said I'm, I'm pretty pretty new to the kind of vo's scene um uh but whenever we perform we do like a 20 odd minute vocal warm-up that we have that um kind of that we kind of did like a bit of a zoom with one of with our um singing teacher back at home is when, this is this one of those weird warm-ups as well uh i mean <laughs> they're all I mean, pretty weird it does, <laughs> it does it does sound a bit weird i guess um people walk past the dressing room and we're like what are those guys doing um <laughs> but um and like I, I you know i'm not sure if it's 100 percent the same you know with, with with voice acting but um uh you know the, there's definitely a need for for like as mikey said keeping hydrated and uh but like definitely warming up your voice i think you know if you want to start like if, if you've got like a high voice that like you, you can do exercises that start low and then go high and you keep doing that and it will it will start to bring your voice up and up and up and basically the reverse you want to get nice and low you kind of you know you want to you, like you want to kind of chuck you know, like chuck your throat down there um but uh i wouldn't know any specific warm-ups for for kind of vo stuff but i imagine it would be there are there about similar to to a, to a vocal warm-up that we do for a, for a sort of a singing performance I yeah. agree with Kyle. I totally agree. What he said is exact. Yeah, I do. I do the same thing. I'd like to. I'd like to know. I'll. I'll have to grab yours. Your. Your warm up off you, Kyle. I. I. I do one. Yeah. Uh, about. Yeah. About fifteen minutes or something like that, and a lot of jumping up. But I mean, that's different. That's different. That's, when <laughs> yeah. that's when you're psyching yourself up. That is a jump. Yeah. 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 Getting your heart rate going and everything, and yeah, yeah, pacing up and down, having words with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and do you have any any tactics um i, I guess for you carl on, when you're both on the road actually when you when, when you're touring like are, are the good throat remedies um any hidden ingredients is it like a honey lemon situation what's a good way to uh keep, so, keep your throat healthy i guess throat coat throat coat is good what is that tea bag it's, it's like a tea bag that you kind oh, okay. of, that, that you use. Um, there's also there's this there's this old like a uh, Chinese kind of herbal remedy thing. I'll send it to you. I'll, 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 I'll send it to you afterwards, and yeah. then you can pop it up now. <laughs> there, you there it is. Um, Sponsored by. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's great. You just do like do that in some hot water is like is and it tastes amazing as well because a lot of the time things that are good for your throat generally just taste like this but this is this is so tasty 
uh, and yeah, just just drinking so much water because especially on the bus, there's lo- there's aircon all the time. Particularly yeah. when you're touring in the hot country, you need it on all the time, or you just you just you can't you can't live, and that just it, that that just dries you out. So we've got like a like a, like, a, like an air humidifier to to kind of try and counteract that. Um, yeah, just water, just loads and loads of water. That's great. So um, also licorice. Do you ever have that, Carl? No. Oh, I, I love panda licorice. Uh, they, they, oh, there's another advertisement. Uh, like <laughs> natural, natural licorice. It's amazing. It just like coats your throat and makes it. Yeah, I really love that. You know, manuka oh, wow. honey as well. Manuka honey. Manuka honey. That's a good yes. one. I had a whole bag full of manuka honey once, man. It's expensive. It is. But good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm saying a whole bag. I had about five manuka honeys. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, well, I was touring around. and oh, there we go. Some manuka yeah. honey. I was eating so much of it, man, for the, you know, because because it's, it's got natural um, antibiotics or something, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so something like that. And yeah, with, with that, you just you spoon it right in. Yeah, it's amazing. I love that. I love that. So, yeah, there's a lot of things, but the... But a, a big thing which which is important is like not to get not to party every night because then that would completely dry you out and you're wait you know you're exhausted and yeah is it is there a limit to how much you can go out on the town <laughs> it's like one one yeah. night per tour <laughs> oh no uh, <laughs> I'm yet to uh, I'm yet to I'm I, I'm tell you what at the end of the tour I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Once I've worked it out, I've got a lot of working out to do on that on that front, yeah. and I'll let you know. <laughs> I've, had, so, I've had tours when I've been like four nights in a row. I've been drinking, then I'm like, uh, and then I've had a couple of tours where I've gone sober the whole tour. It's quite yeah. Crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Corey, Sarah, carry on. yeah. So, um, so obviously, you are both um, you're respected in the music industry, uh, and what would be good to know because I love a bit of music, um, but what what bands, what musicians are rocking your world musically right now, and who should people be looking to uh, check out? Obviously, everyone already knows Sixth and Bastille, so they're covered. Um, but but who who who's given you who's given you life? Uh, can I take a chance to plug my uh, music video coming out right now? <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I'm you can. You can. <laughs> Right. Anyway, um, anyway, no, no, uh, what was I going to say? So bands that, are, there's a band who are touring with us for a, for a metal band, because I don't listen to much metal at the moment. I listen to psychedelic rock usually, and, and old 70s, 60s, 70s stuff. I love The Doors and Velvet Underground, stuff like that, you know? Mm. But I love, oh, I love, I like the Manchester Orchestra. That's not a new band, but I like them a lot. And uh, what's the other band? Uh, palm reader they were they were good from metal really like heavy extreme band i don't know kyle what are you thinking man? um yeah oh uh, wow i kind of there's so much stuff i'm listening to at the minute um uh so glass animals have like um who obviously have been around for a while but um i, I feel like i feel like they just broke america not like broke but as in like 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 they just smashed yeah, yeah, it yeah. like um like Grammy noms and stuff like that, um, and and I've like I've always, I've always loved their music. Uh, London Grammar, of course. Ops, shout out to Dot. Um, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then I don't know, just like uh, Pink Panthers and uh, some other acts like that. Kind of, yeah, it's weird. I oddly don't really listen to too much music. I'm like I, I go through phases, and currently I'm in like a gaming and podcast phase. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, you know, glass animals. Adrian Smith, Adrian Smith, my maiden, also said that he didn't he didn't often listen to that much music. He was often going fishing and and stuff like this. So yeah, it is it is it is interesting though because like myself, I'm quite cyclical in terms of when I take on new music. So I will one day say, okay, I'm going to listen to a bunch of stuff and let some stuff in and see what lands um and then it'll be like three years before i do that again <laughs> yeah. um and it's like i just slowly add things to my even my vinyl collection or uh or you know playlists and so on and then it will be like three years before i can get in a place where i can take the plunge again because i, I find 
I find at different stages in your life, you need something a bit different that kind of like travels alongside you. Different yeah. moves, different days as well, isn't it? It's nothing, yeah. like, you know, what I, when I've finished playing a gig, the last thing I want to hear is metal, you know, things like that. <laughs> and often, well, that's the same. It's like everyone's like, hey, oh, you work in video games. That's so cool. You can just play games all day, blah, 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 blah. But the truth is the last thing you want to do after a day of working in games is then go and play games. It's like, I need, I need something else. I need, I need, I need a podcast. I need trees um, or, you know, just trees, yeah. bake or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is that yeah. I found in different, uh, being creative, you need a lot of different color. You yeah. Know, I'm, a, I'm doing voiceovers. I'll be recording them. I'll be directing them. And then I'll be like, man, I want to do, something else i've got to make a music video for myself or something like that or someone and then make some music and do this and i think and kyle does that with uh with voiceovers with uh producing with doing his own music as well, lots of different i think you need different like yeah it, when you're being creative anyway but yeah yeah yes yeah. so, sorry you talk about chilling out and i was different like, different creative textures right i think yeah i agree yeah, yeah definitely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've just been informed by the voice in my ear. There is no voice in my ear, but <laughs> I have taken up a lot of your time. So we are coming to uh, an end now. But before we go, it would be great for you to tell everyone uh, what is what is going on. Where can people find you? Um, and uh, like Kyle, you can tell us about the tour. Mikey, I want to know about your new music video now. <laughs> well, we, do, we, we just did one because we've got uh, two gigs at the end of the year in London in November. And um, the music videos uh, we're putting out two weeks ago to this podcast is uh, Behind the Doors. And that's it. It's just, I, I really like the some of the lyric videos nowadays are just amazing. Yeah. Like how, how they can make things from like, uh, I, I'm amazed by them. Just, just like pictures, you know, still yeah. images. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, that's it. That's all my thing. I've, I'm done. I, uh, before we go on there, that that is the thing though, like, lyric videos have become so big and the the artistry that goes into them these days because I, it, you have to you have to say that it's kind of like part of the move away from the old school and i'm gonna say mtv but music tv you know like the box and 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 that sort of thing where music videos were everything um you know i, I think there's a lot of music videos now the primarily released on like youtube and so on so i think those lyric those look videos have come up in terms of oh, um I'm, I'm amazed by it there's this company there's i'll oh, give them a shout out if that's all right they're yeah 12 inch media and they they have three guys and they're different styles all of them and they do the most insane stuff they do them for like huge bands uh as well but they also they're actually members of a band called um oh, i better get this bleed from within and they're a Scottish metal band, and they're they're the friendliest dudes. But yeah, Kyle, I'll, I'll send you their stuff later as well. It's, yeah, uh, do it. It's really good. Yeah, they're, they're, and it just amazed me. I'm like, how did you do this? This is insane. You know, and, and it's a, and it's a quick way nowadays for for people. You know, you because if you do um uh, uh actual video, it has to be so grand. It has to be really like this amazing thing for a real official video. So. Yeah, doing lots of lyric videos gets uh, gets a lot of your songs out there a lot quicker, do you know? Yeah, for sure. Takes a bit of pressure off. And then when people go to your shows, they know the lyrics. They know the, they words. Know the actual lyrics. It's not misheard lyrics. <laughs> Seriously, the amount of the amount of lyrics that I've learned uh, from songs that have released <laughs> lyric videos that I was like, I'm sure I knew them off by heart. And then you read the lyrics and you're like, oh, I was way off. I was way off. I'm singing about something completely different. <laughs> But, but but Kyle, what's uh what what what's uh where can everyone find you on tour and uh what's the rest of the tour looking like? Yeah, so um I've got another I've got another month out in out in North America. Um although when this comes out, there'll be two weeks left, I think. Um so if anyone's in North America, uh, come and see us. Um other than fly that, out. Play, just come and fly out. Yeah, do it. Um we're playing loads of festivals kind of um all around uh, the UK and Europe um sort of through the summer we've got a european tour in november uh we've got south america later in the year as well um you're not too busy then <laughs> yeah well i mean we've just had two years sitting sitting in my pants on my sofa playing PlayStation. <laughs> it's um yeah it's yeah we're we're, we're we're sort of trying to make the most of touring now get around to see everyone uh and yeah we're called bastille um and then um 
Uh, I'm also like I'm part of like a production duo called Tide, which is like it's kind of less alternative indie pop. It's more kind of electronic. So okay. if that floats your boat. Go and have a look at Tide. T Y D E. Well, no, oh, so, so, seriously, though, tell us a bit more about Tide. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued. This is for oh, me now. It's okay. Taking over. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so, um, it, it's got it, it's got more kind of like hip hop, R and B, housey influences kind of thing. Um, it's like it's like it's it's kind of. It's kind of like four or five in the morning after a party kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh like the, there's still a vibe but it's not like not like thumping club stuff yeah um and uh um i do that with my um, good friend nick who he's like an engineer he's working on some really good stuff at the minute um with some big uk acts i'm not sure i mean well i don't know he works with uh, law Karna, so there's a uh, there'll be an album on the way so that's fantastic Incredible. and whenever we get a chance we kind of we kind of yeah try and get some music together but um Obviously, we're very busy. He works with people like Lord Carner, and I'm yeah. in Bastille. So it's uh, you're on tour forever. So uh... on tour forever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like just like Mikey was saying. Just it's good to just be creative in all different all different ways with all different people, and that's kind of how you kind of create that keep that creativity going. And you keep the the change in the music as well, and stuff like that. Variation within music itself is really good. Yeah, yeah. help the industry evolve, right? Exactly. Don't sit still. And I think that's a very good place to end it. I just want to thank you both for joining us. Uh, and now we'll go back to the future version of me and Jake. Thanks again. Wired Unplugged. Well, there you have it. What more can we say? I feel like I need to invest in some tour buses or something like this. After that, <laughs> that's that's a lot of info. And I wonder if we're going to see a, a Bastille cover of a Seek song anytime soon. Maybe you could. Maybe you, that that could have happened. Like I don't know. I, 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 I was so tempted. I was like, listen, have have you? I, I, there was a question. I was just going to be like, have you ever just thrown your stuff together and see what happens? But you know, the the conversation went. It it didn't go that way. So um, I was like, hey, let's leave it open for you know. Yeah. Everyone's, go beg go beg them on twitter you can, yeah. you can follow them on twitter it's, their uh, tags are on uh they were on screen so so listen guys thank you very much when we return it will be the big one e3 week it's starting um listen if you've got any sort of guess i'll tell you what how about this let's do something we, we'll make a little little wager yeah why don't you send us an email to unplug that wired and I want you to name five games that, that aren't announced yet, not games that we've we've seen on like Reddit, Game Leaks, subreddit and that. Be good. See if you can guess five games. Aaron wants heroically, like <laughs> unbelievable, like to the point where it's like insane, guessed Klonoa. If you can do that, if five games, a little bingo card, if you can get five, you will get a super, super special prize. It's super special and I haven't thought of what it is yet, but I know that we're going to come up with something really exciting for you. Yeah. So listen, We'll see you next week for the big one. Thank you to Kyle, Mikey, and Aaron for their service. And thank you all for listening. Um, God save the Queen and all that. Hey, we'll see you next time. See you Bye. later. Bye. Hello, Queen Elizabeth again. You can call me Madge, short for Majesty. Hope you enjoyed the episode and liked, subscribed, hit the notification, and wrote that comment saying how beautiful I am. Well, my crown is slipping. If you didn't know, I shall be putting you in the tower. Okay, to off for now. Word Unplugged.